This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this episode, he's going to be taking a look at the weapons from Void Interactive's tactical shooter, Ready or Not. Now, as we're looking at extreme detail, the primers are visibly dented on all six of these fresh rounds that have, been, that have just been loaded. They shouldn't be, they should be perfectly smooth and flat because they're meant to be dented by the firing pin to fire the round. Jonathan will be revisiting Ready or Not in a couple of weeks' time, so make sure to subscribe if you're keen to check out the second episode later on, and if there are any other games, guns, or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comments section below. Right, let's take a look at the guns of Ready or Not. Alright, MP5, and we've got an A4, which is the fixed stock, like this one. I have to put this one together for the video. And the burst fire capable trigger group. That's what makes this, and this, an A4. Although I'm not sure if the game calls it an A4 or not. This one's been modified, clearly. And I don't, I'm not up on MP5 accessories, but that is an M-Lock 4 end of some sort. And what looks like it might be a silencer co suppressor. I'm, I'm ready for a torrent of, of your wrong comments on that one. And that looks like a Trigicon SRS, which we actually do have in the collection, but not on uh, an HK claw mount. This this is a, a firearm that was released in 1966, when optical sight provision was minimal. It was there. And so, if you're not familiar, the HK, uh, the traditional roller locked HK, um, or roller delayed, HK uh, firearms have these shapes pressed into the metal that take what's called a claw mount because it looks a bit like a claw and that means you can adapt this uh, legacy <laughs> weapon to modern optical sights which is what we see here and that's absolutely fine that trigicon is i don't know i haven't seen one in, in use in a while um i don't know how popular they are in us swat teams and we have a fairly traditional vertical foregrip attached to the bottom of the railed handguard as well. Overall, our old favourite, the MP5, is depicted really very well here, I think. In terms of modelling and textures, it's up there with the best that I've seen. The sound effect sounds right, <laughs> and it looks to handle okay as well. Now, something that's often discussed in the context of law enforcement firearms is penetration, specifically over penetration. And I'm not going to weigh in too heavily into that debate, except to say that 9mm ball ammunition, such as fired by the MP5, will happily go through wooden doors, drywall. It, it, it's more penetrative than people think. So, by Sticking with pistol rounds doesn't automatically mean that you're going to save an innocent person on the other side of a thin wall, say. You have to think about ammunition choice, barrel length, there are all sorts of other factors to consider. Now, but there is this sort of received wisdom that pistol rounds are less likely to keep going and hit people that they shouldn't. So it's good to see in the game, certainly that door is not posing any issue to 9mm rounds, they're going straight through, as of course they would in real life. Unarmed contact, be advised. Wow, well that's that's a very effective breaching shotgun that has uh, not only opened the door, but utterly destroyed it. I don't, I don't know if it uh, might need a bit of tweaking there. Now the, the door was actually breached by that first shot, taking out the, the door handle, and that might be enough. Uh, we then see the, the player attempt to take out the hinges. So in theory, if you, if you were to like blow both hinges and kick or, or bash the door, down it goes and your and your team is in. In this case, three shots was enough to sort of disintegrate the door into bits, which is perhaps not, not as clean as you might wish. Just seeing a breaching shotgun in a game is a thumbs up though, because um, most games just don't accommodate the weapon as a tool. In this context, the breaching shotgun, I believe this configuration that's in use, so this is a Mossberg 500. Now normally, a shotgun with no buttstock is a really bad idea. Any long gun without a buttstock, you'd better have a very good reason for having it because 
you are instantly less accurate with it. Now in this case, it's because you're not less accurate with it because you're placing the muzzle at the hinges or at the lock and you are using ideally a special breaching round, a frangible type ammunition that in theory is less likely to go through what you're shooting at and hurt someone. So it is, in this context, a tool, a piece of equipment, not intended as a combat weapon. Now I guess if you came through the door and somehow the team failed you and all you had was this, of course you're going to try and use it, but those frangible rounds will not be the most effective anti-personnel round going. Drop your weapon! Drop the weapon now! Just stop shooting! So, less than lethal. We do have a number of tasers in the collection at the Royal Armouries. They are firearms adjacent, but they are non, in theory, non-lethal, or certainly less than lethal. So the version depicted in the game, and it is a, ta a true taser. Taser is a much abused term, usually applied to just about everything that has electricity in it. In this case, it's an actual taser. The version in the game is the M26. A civilian version that came out around the same time was the M18, and that's what I have here because it's the closest thing we have. It's the same simple polymer frame, capacitors and replaceable CO2 cartridges containing um, the, the wires that spool out. We see that in the footage there. And they are sort of coiled like that. So the depiction of the of the probes and the wires coming out is, is pretty good. And we also see the reload. Press and remove the expended cartridge. Click in the new one. So it's, it's pretty good. There are a couple of sort of queries, I, I suppose. Uh, one is the visible blue electricity. Now that has to be a gameplay element because you can't see electricity. Well, you can, but not in this context. When the two probes hit, you see nothing. So I do, I do take issue with the blue, the blue flash. The response of the suspects to being hit as well. Now I, I have not been tased, but the developers, I'm pretty sure could quite easily arrange to be tased. And when those two probes strike and make sufficient contact or near contact to the skin for the electricity to pass through the body. You go rigid, totally incapacitated. Usually you fall to the floor as a result of that, almost always. And then depending on who you are, how you're built, how healthy you are, how determined you are, you recover sometimes worryingly quickly <laughs> from what I've seen. Sometimes you are so exhausted by all your muscles tensing up at once and then relaxing that you are out of the fight. Here, it makes them stop fighting, but they stay upright. They don't tense, they don't plank. So I think I think that needs a bit of work. Maybe maybe some more reference footage or, or you know, go and get tased, guys. Now, it wouldn't be a tactical game without some AR-15 variants. This is maybe the most classic. Now they're calling this from the selection screen an M4A1. It's not an M4A1. Um, it is, I believe, a Mark 18. So it is basically an M4, but with the short entry length barrel. So for you know, to try and approximate the length of an MP5, basically. The version we see here has got uh, a more modern buttstock on it and a quad rail handguard but it's the same basic weapon as this. It does fit the bill, a shorter barrel. You don't really want to be, like the old school LAPD SWAT in the 70s had full length M16A1s. I mean, that was considered a short weapon in those days, but not something you want to be busting down doors with. Today, when you have better options available and ammunition options that can claw back some of that effect, some of that terminal effect, that lethality that you lose with a shortened barrel. So of course you're gonna see a weapon like this in this situation and see how it plays. Get on the ground now. Hands up. Make him secure. Hold on. Contact is secure. Right, I've got the footage paused just to get a good look at the ammunition here. Now I don't think I don't think types of rifle ammunition are a thing in this game, at least not yet. The rounds shown are visibly green tipped, so that that would usually mean that they were M855, a US military type of 556 ammunition. It's not armor piercing per se, but it has a reasonably hard penetrator inside it, uh, each bullet, and it, it emphasizes penetration over um, any other effect. That's an interesting choice for, for this scenario, because it is going to increase the chance of a bullet zipping through somebody and hitting somebody else behind. I might expect to see actually hollow point ammunition, some sort of expanding ammunition, which although illegal for land warfare, 
is pretty standard now for law enforcement. So that's a, a nice detail in terms of including the tips on the round. I'm guessing it's that's the ammunition they had to, to reference to make this, but it's maybe not the best ammunition to be simulating in a law enforcement context. Suspect killed. Talk to entry team. Minor point, and it's not weapon specific, but we're not seeing picking up of enemy weapons. There's an absolute trope of first person shooters at this point that you can at any point just abandon the weapon that you've trained on, that the department in this case has paid for, and pick up some random person's gun that may or may not function, may or may not, may or may not be accurate, may have all sorts of issues with it. It, it's absolutely right that the mechanic here is instead to secure that and take it in as evidence. Maybe you wouldn't p wrap it up for forensics there on the spot, but um, that's a ready indicator in game that that weapon has been secured. So you don't pick up enemy weapons, you secure them. So you are stuck with the weapon that you enter the map with and the ammunition you enter the map with. That's what we like to see. All done. Contact is secure. Drop the weapon! <laughs> ready for trailer. So some of the, the um, shall we say, legally different markings on things are only obvious if you look for them, if you look at them in the, the gunsmith part of a game. Some of them, however, are right in your face. And this um, EOTech site that actually says Leotech, L-E-O-Tech, for, I presume, legal reasons, is, is quite noticeable. But not so noticeable that it takes you out of the game, which is, of course, the art in, in doing this kind of thing. And it's also quite clever, because LEO is an abbreviation for Law Enforcement Officer. So, Leo Tech makes perfect sense. Roger. Trailers inbound. Slightly strange choice for a modern tactical shooter of this nature is the Colt Python, which is what this is. So a 357 Magnum revolver, same as this one. Instant drawback of only six shots. Okay, it has stopping power. Well, I think we can all agree that uh, 17 rounds of 9mm is probably preferable to six rounds of 357, whatever you think of the stopping power argument. And if you are having to shoot at people wearing soft body armor, chances are it's going to stop this. However, um, I wonder if this is a bit of a nod toward the French GIGN. They don't use pythons, but they do use the Manuel um, MR73, or at least they still have them. So, so that is one sort of elite special weapons and tactics type police sort of unit who have favoured this type of revolver. And back in the 70s, absolutely, you might find SWAT teams using them, certainly found detectives using them for that additional penetration. But not really a viable choice, I would say. It's big, it's long, it's heavy, you only get six shots. That said, I really appreciate the attention to detail with the reloading. When the weapon runs runs dry because the rounds stay where they are the cases stay where they are because they're fired cases but you can continue to pull through on the trigger and the cylinder revolves with the empty cases still in it clicking merrily away doing absolutely nothing most games will just have it go click nothing will happen you won't actually see it follow through on the trigger pull like that so i do appreciate that level of detail i also recognize the need for variety with with sidearms pistols are an important part of a game like this um, if the game is correctly set up there will be times when moving through close quarters with a pistol might make sense, more so than in a military shooter where it's just a backup weapon. So to give you variety so that you can fully make use of the sidearms, I understand why you might, why you might include it. Now, as we're looking at extreme detail, a carryover maybe from the movie world where this happens all the time. The primers are visibly dented on all six of these fresh rounds that, are bit, that have just been loaded. They shouldn't be. They should be perfectly smooth and flat because they're meant to be crushed by the firing pin or dented by the firing pin to fire the round. We should only see all six primers dented when all six rounds have been fired. Now, that would be a really minor detail if it weren't for the fact that we have a equivalent of a chamber check, which I, I really like the fact that they have press checks in the game. The player character is checking the, effectively the primers on his rounds to see what he's fired, but because they're all fired, it's a completely pointless gesture. It doesn't show you how many rounds you have left. So there is actually a gameplay consequence to not modeling fired versus unfired primers. Game's not finished. I imagine that's something they're already planning to include. Oh, shit. Help us, Drop 
the weapon now. This is almost literally a simply a spicy paintball gun. This is a, in fact, if you've been a paintballer or, or know your paintball guns, this is a, a Tipman A5 with the air bottle set up in the uh, under barrel configuration. So it is literally a paintball gun. It'll be uh, 0.68 caliber. Only instead of projecting balls of paint, <laughs> it's uh, irritant. It's a, uh, you know, uh, chili pepper or capsaicin uh, extract. Inside it is, is a powder and it bursts into a little cloud. It's extremely unpleasant. It's another option in the less than lethal toolbox. It might take several shots to achieve the same sort of effect. It's something that might persuade people to, to rethink what they're doing. You have a, a, a psychological effect of being shot at and hit by something and then you have the stuff that gets in your eyes and in your throat and is not pleasant. But the actual delivery system, with a couple of exceptions, is not even a modified paintball gun, just a rebranded paintball gun. In fact, TAC 700 is a real designation for one of these weapons. Uh, from a company called Pepperball, who um, may be the most prominent providers of this kind of thing. If you're thinking, that looks like a toy MP5, that's because the Tipman A5 is inspired by the MP5. Talk to high ground. Entry team. Suspect and are refusing to cooperate. Move in. All right. Well, I, I feel I can't criticise the inclusion of an FN FAL or FAL, if you prefer, in any game because it's pretty iconic. Standard service rifle of the British Army for many years. I know some of my friends and contacts would uh, would hate me if I said, "Why is this in this game?" However, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I know why it's in the game. It's in the game because it's cool and because it's a 762 by 51 punchier, more powerful rifle option. Now, there are others you could have gone for. It could be like an AR-10 pattern type or SR-25 pattern. It would have been it would be perhaps the more likely. They're not really that common as an entry weapon. I mean, this is the right length to be a, a, an entry gun. Uh, 762 or 308 in law enforcement usage these days is typically a marksman's rifle. Uh, it's a bit too loud and concussive for use indoors. Even if you want, really want the terminal effect of the full power round, it, it's a bit much even for the operators, uh, That that especially in short barrel form. That's gonna. That's a real noisemaker. It, it's a somewhat outdated. Dare I say? This is the DS Arms version with a, a, a nice solid railed top cover on it. Hence the big screws down the side because that's rigidly fixed in place. One of the legacy problems with the with the FNFAL. Get down! I want to see him. I see a civilian. Mm, so, uh, ostensibly, the reason for having this big ball rifle, as it were, or relatively, in the game is to give you... I mean, clearly in increased recoil, you can see that, but in theory, every shot should be a fight stopper. But we did just see a centre mass shot at quite close range with 762, and the guy did not stop. People, people have and will continue to, to do all sorts of incredible things in terms of injuries, but um, I think you'd be going down with, with any any shots to the chest area with, with this caliber. That's really the only reason you would use it. Drop the weapon. If you'd like to check out the Royal Armouries YouTube channel alongside uh, this one, uh, please do. We also have various of our own social media outlets and three rather nice museums that you can come and visit. And as ever, if you'd be kind enough to donate to us, we don't require it by any means, but um, there is a link in the description. Thanks again, guys. Uh -huh.